Good evening. It is so amazing to see how many people are out here being a voice for those that do not have a voice. As I was standing back here, I remember the first time I came to this Capitol, which was the year my son was diagnosed with autism. And we walked up these steps, and he played in that fountain down there. And we were here because we wanted to let people know that we have to have service for individuals who have disabilities. And you know, my son Logan, I will not be ashamed to say, he is the reason why I wanted to come to the West Virginia legislature. Because I knew that we need to have people who are willing to stand up and speak for those that are at home and nobody understands what it's like to live in their shoes for the day. And people who have served in government know that we live in the state that is the second oldest, which means that we have an older population, plus we have a large volume of individuals with disability. This just didn't happen this year. This has been going on. This has been data that's been collected for many years. And you know what? We cannot trade off the young people, the children, the disabled, and trade it over somewhere else. We need to take care of all citizens of West Virginia who have disabilities. Rather, you're two weeks old getting out of the NICU, or rather, you're 105 years old, you have a right to have services. And one point that I want to make is the individuals who need waiver services did not choose the disability that they have. They did not choose that. And you know, we have many services here in the state of West Virginia that I do not believe that individuals don't have a choice. But when we're talking about disability, we're talking about the age, they have no choice of the situation that they're in. And for us to turn our back and say, we are now going to take services away from you is unacceptable in my eyes. And I totally respect the Secretary of Health, and I respect our governor, and I respect our senators and our fellow delegates. But every single one of us need to remember, if you don't live a life with someone who is disabled or aged and need assistance, you are blind to the situation. You know, some of the proposed cuts have to do with individuals that go to day treatment centers that actually get to be out and socialize. So I was thinking about this last night and I thought, you know what? Those of us who are moms that have to fight for everything for our children from the time they're in school to the time they graduate and then they go to a day treatment center. Now after two years, guess what? We're done with you. Okay, so what's going to happen? Are they going to decline socially? Are they going to decline medically? I think they will. And you have to remember, under the Department of Health and Human Resources is Child Protective Services and Adult Protective Services that looks into what is neglect and abuse. And you know what? When we take services away from individuals with disabilities, I feel that falls under neglect. And you know, all that most of us ask for is that people would accept the differences that we have, our children have, our parents have, our neighbor has. But if we start saying, after two years, we're done with you, what are we going to do? Stick them on the porch and put them in the back of a bedroom and say, that's where you're going to have to stay. Because guess what? We don't have any service for, for you to go out there and socialize and be among the rest of the community that you have a right to belong to.
And I will close with this, but I think what we need to do is we need to get together with the governor's office. We need to get together with the Department of Human Services. We need to get the, the people who are the stakeholders of this. We need to get with the families, and we need to come up with a compromise. And you know what? What I have to say is there are a lot of programs. There are a lot of programs. And you know, there was a study done that showed that maybe some of those programs maybe aren't what we anticipated them to be. But what I want to say is, and I've heard this statement said before, you cannot manage what you do not monitor. And I think we need to be sure that the state of West Virginia monitors the programs they have, the ones that aren't effective, but the ones that are needed is where we put our money. But once again, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, my son Logan is now 12 years old. And you know, I am so proud of what we have done during this session when the governor signed and the legislature approved the West Virginia ABLE Act. And I think for us to turn around and take money away when we just passed a bill that's going to help protect individuals who have disabilities. And you know, I, I, I get really confused because you know, this ABLE Act is something for us to be proud of in West Virginia. We are not gonna be the 50th state that has the West Virginia ABLE Act. We're gonna be the top five. And what that says is we acknowledge that we need to help the citizens, the children with disabilities, and help their mothers and fathers and people that wanna be sure. Just like one of the ladies spoke, every day I worry about when I'm gone, what is gonna happen to Logan? And I think every one of you out there who has a child or a neighbor or a grandchild, you believe the same thing. And we cannot sit here and say that we will take less care for those that we love. I appreciate every one of you, and I am behind you just as much as every single one of the delegates that are standing back here. And we care about you, and we will do what we can to try to make a difference.